Uh, Jeff, I know your latest episode for Inside the Birds just uh, dropped uh, yesterday morning, so people can check it out at InsideTheBirds.com and wherever you get your podcast. so make sure you do that. I know you guys looked at a little preview going on for the Eagles before training camp. Uh, anything worth pointing out to us right now? I'm sure there's a lot, but what really stuck out to you? Well, we've been doing a four-part series, an NFC East preview series. So we divided it in all four teams. And Greg Cosell has been on with us for all four. And if you ever spend any time with Greg Cosell, you know that there's nobody that breaks down tape that's not employed by an NFL team better than Greg Cosell. So he's done a phenomenal job. And we talked a lot about the Eagles. That's the We saved that for last. That one just dropped, as you, you said, the uh, in the morning. And, um, I, you know, he, he had some really interesting observations on Jalen Hurts, on Jalen Rager, on Fulgham, on a lot of guys that that we keep talking about. He just watches the tape incessantly and that takes any bias, takes any agenda out. He just tells you what he sees on tape. So I encourage everybody to listen and and kind of get a feel for how he felt about Hurts and Rager and Fulgham. Because these are polarizing guys right now, Mark. I mean, some people you could find people on each side of the spectrum on all of these guys. Oh, certainly. Absolutely. Uh, but when it comes to Hertz, I just feel like, and I know we talked about this a month ago, but when it comes to this team right now, I just feel like so much is really riding on the shoulders of Jalen Hurts. And that could be the most obvious thing ever because he's an NFL quarterback, but we don't know how good he could be or on the other side of that, how bad he could be right now. What is your impression of him going into training camp in a couple of weeks? Well, the first thing I'll say about Jalen Hurts is, is that he's a, if he hasn't yet already, He's about to find out what life is like in the NFL for a quarterback who is not a first round pick and not, you know, most of them go in the top 10 to 15 because he's been being put in a situation that not a lot of quarterbacks get put into in the NFL. Usually if you're a top pick, even if you struggle a little bit, you're going to get year two, year three, uh, probably even year four until they ultimately make a decision on you. Um, But if you're a second round pick and beyond, you're, you're kind of, always fighting for your job. And that's the situation he's in right now, right? I mean, he's, we know the Eagles have three first round picks. We've heard about Deshaun Watson. We've heard about Russell Wilson flirtations with everyone else. And so, whereas most young quarterbacks get an opportunity to uh, at least have a, you know, a so-so first year or build off what he may not have that opportunity. And so Honestly, I think he's handled everything very well since being named the starter and then going into the offseason and doing the workouts. We've learned that he's a great leader. We've learned that he's got great poise, that teammates like him. All that is very important, but all that has been said a lot, a lot of quarterbacks, it's how you play. And unfor- well, I don't want to say unfortunately for him, but what's unique for him, Mark, is that it feels like it's a one-year audition. And think about how many good quarterbacks in the league who, if you only judge them off their first year, may not have been a- – Eli Manning won two Super Bowls. He was not a very good quarterback his first right. year. He was your typical rookie quarterback. Um, and so we'll we'll see for Jalen with when the heat is really turned on. And in, in his mind, he's got to know it's one year, and he knows all the assets that the Eagles have, um, how he can handle all that, because that would make anybody kind of press a little bit and internalize, you know? Certainly. And when I think of Jalen Hurts, I don't just think about that. The fact that that's what he's up against a second round pick who only had what four starts last year, played in a bunch of games, but only had four starts. It's not only him competing against himself out there. It's also, you think about, think about all those other guys like Eli Manning and whoever, uh, and Russell Westbrook or uh, Russell Wilson, all those names being out there right now, uh, Deshaun Watson, but he's also competing against the fact that the Eagles could have three first round picks next year as well. Exactly. So I feel like he's starting out the season already on the hot seat. And I'm glad that he has the mentality that the, the rents do every day when it comes to success. Yeah. He's going to need that. You know, I, I don't know that every single quarterback could, um, could handle that situation. Certainly, you know, a guy like Dwayne Haskins didn't handle his first year well in Washington. And he had a lot more handed to him year one, and he barely made it into year two, right? Didn't. So, um, with Jalen, who comes from two good programs, but number one, as you mentioned, Alabama, where he learned under Nick Saban about the rent being due every day, yeah. and he gets to see the rea- he gets to see a reality from what Carson Wentz went through, and also knowing the Eagles have these assets, right, and the reports out there that a guy like Dwayne Haskins probably could not see. Dwayne Haskins thought he was the franchise; the owner loved him. There was nobody pressuring him, and yet he still wound up not making the team, right? He didn't He didn't know the urgency facing him. He never probably thought they're going to cut a first-round pick after a year, 
right? But Jalen Hurts knows what the writing on the wall is. And I think the Alabama pedigree there and just everything he's gone through in college and even last year will help him. Now, will that be a big determinant in his success or not? I couldn't tell you, but at least he knows what he's up against. Is there anything on the football field that you took away from last year that said, oh, this is really what makes me have confidence that he'll be a good quarterback? And is there anything that made you go, all right, I'm a little nervous about this guy? Well, I mean, both. I mean, I thought he did a very good job at times of extending the play when it wasn't there. Um, You know, the first touchdown he threw to Greg Ward, right, was like a a third and long or a fourth long. I forget what it was, but he was able to kind of keep his eyes open uh, as he floated out of the pocket. Hit jail, hit Greg Ward on a deep over touchdown, and that was good. That was that was what you wanted to see. And then I, you know, when he was down sixteen nothing against Arizona on the road against a good team, that was a, probably a situation a lot of quarterbacks would have wilted or not been able to come back. He didn't win the game, but he certainly put points on the board and kept his team afloat. So you saw that that leadership, that poise. Uh, but you know, Greg Cosell was on with us in the in the pod, and he talked about the times where you watch the tape and you see that he tends to get out of the pocket, even when there's not pressure or just the slightest bit of pressure. Um, and those secondary and, and tertiary routes that develop while he's getting out of the pocket, because the first route was taken away. Those are opportunities to make plays. If you can stay in there and see it develop uh, that he did not do at times. Now people are going to say, well, he, the offensive line was terrible pressure. Yeah. But there are, there are plays every game where he's not facing pressure. And that was great. What Greg was trying to say. There are times where you can make a fair evaluation of him as a pocket passer, where he would flee the pocket unnecessarily when there were routes to develop. So again, that doesn't mean he can't do it. Doesn't mean he won't do it. You have to think of the entire context of no train, real training camp, no OTAs, but these are things that you're going to want him to be able to do this year. Uh, I, two more things for you. One is Jalen Rager, I feel like, is almost flying under the radar now simply because Devontae Smith is here. He didn't have a huge rookie year, obviously, and you have a rookie quarterback, so there's a lot of things to talk about. Jalen Rager, to you, what do you think he'll be in this Eagles offense in the upcoming season? Yeah, well, first of all, you can't fly under the radar too long here in Philadelphia. <laughs> That's right? for I mean, sure. As, as soon as training camp starts, everybody will be under the radar and, and be pretty omnipresent under it, So, and, and he will be one of them. I think two things are going to happen. One, that whole, I've had an off season. I know what it's like to be in the Eagle. I know what it's like to have adversity and not, not uh, succeed right away is going to drive him a little bit. And then the number two, I think the coaches did him a disservice last year. Uh, I thought the routes were very vertical, no matter it, whether the offensive line was blocking well or not. It didn't seem like they made a concerted effort to get his, the ball in his hands in short spaces across the middle to let him use run after the catch. You saw it occasionally, but not enough, in my opinion. Uh, the whole offense was dysfunctional. So even if maybe the plays were called and Carson poo-pooed him, I don't know. But I think it's really important for this coaching staff, and it sounds like they want to do that from what I understand, is to be able to target, get the ball in his hands eight to ten times a game in a variety of ways, whether it's split out, whether it's from the slot. We already know in OTAs he was taking handoffs from uh, from Jalen Hurts as kind of a, a running back. Think about Debo Samuel two years ago with the 49ers as a rookie. They found ways to get him the ball and use that run after catch and that big, strong body that he has. That's what they have to do with Jalen Rager. you got to keep him invested, and he should be returning punts. He was the best punt returner in college two years ago, and for whatever reason, the coaches weren't comfortable having him do it last year, but you saw he took one uh, to the house against, uh, I forget what game, Green Bay I think it was. Um, you gotta, he's gotta be ready to do that. Right. Uh, a couple of things real quick. Uh, first, you're the first person in the five months of this show to use the word omnipresent. So congratulations on that. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, I, I lied. I got two quick ones for you. Cornerback. They solve it from outside or inside the roster. Uh, and then the other is, uh, Zach Ertz here before week one or gone before week one. I still think Zach Ertz is gone. I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense for a lot of reasons to have him on the team. I, I don't have inside info on this. I mean, other than to think that, I mean, other than my own guess is to say that Howie, it's worked for Howie before to keep on to a guy in training camp, wait for an injury around the league to happen, and then see if the interest is there. That worked with Sam Bradford, right? When they had Carson Wentz sure. uh, and some other guys. So maybe that's what he's waiting for now, or maybe he's going to take this thing right to the eve of training camp before he's kind of forced to, like, why would you have Zach Ertz report to training camp, practice, potentially get hurt, 
and then be out for a long time and then be unable to move him or have right. to pay him that money, which is not guaranteed. You can cut him right now and owe him nothing. So it doesn't mean to me, it doesn't make sense to even have him practicing with the team. Then you get the Alshon Jeffrey situation all over again, where you can't get rid of him because he was hurt and you're stuck with him. Then you got to play him when you don't want to. So I still think there it's, I don't see why he would be on the roster and I don't think he will be. What was the first part again? The first part was a cornerback. They're going to solve it with somebody in in house or they're going to bring somebody in. I think they're going to bring somebody in. I could be wrong about this. It's just, I've, I feel like they're they're smart enough to look at the situation and and say, hey, we've addressed a lot of a lot of holes here in the off season. Maybe not with upper echelon talent, but our Anthony Harris's and our Eric Wilson's have addressed holes that we had with with decent enough players. Why are we going to go into this season with uh, a bunch of cornerbacks who just aren't ready to be a number two corner? But everything does come down to money, and the Eagles don't have a lot of it. So Howie's going to have to be creative here. 